Lamella, not pee pee or pineapple, and you're watching Made In. Smelly, medical, organic and natural. How whether you like yours, soap has been around for a long time and doesn't look like it's going to exit our washrooms any time soon. Now apparently, a 12th century Islamic document describes the process of soap production and it mentions the key ingredient, alkali, which later becomes crucial to modern chemistry. Remember those science lessons with litmus papers? Anyway, by the 13th century, the manufacture of soap in the Islamic world had become virtually industrialised, with sources in Nablus, Damascus and Aleppo. Now, if you've already washed your hands, then you're in for a treat, as Made In speak to the smelliest soap producers this side of the Western Hemisphere, and of course, ask the most pertinent of questions. Do you prefer solid or liquid? I, I think I prefer solid soap now, um, just because it's small, it smells amazing, you've got loads of different uses of it as well. Not solid. Uh, liquid. Liquid, definitely. Uh, solid. I'd have to say liquid, because it's easier to use instead of like, well, hard soap. Yeah, that's me. I tend to prefer liquid. I prefer solid soap, yeah. <laughs> liquid soap. Probably liquid, because lots of bubbles. I like bubbles, get in the loofah. <laughs> um, I think I would have used to say liquid, but now I'm kind of moving more to solid. Because I'm actually, like, it, quite a lot of the liquid soaps irritate me, so. Solid soap, yeah. Liquid. Liquid. Why? It's just easier. <laughs> easier to do what? Wash your hands, what else do you do with soap? <laughs> well, if I was going to go for soap, I would go for solid. Solid soap, definitely, especially in this hot weather. So it's so refreshing, um, makes you feel so clean. Nah, just nothing. Definitely liquid. Why? Uh, because you're not left with anything at the end, except a bottle and no hairs. Liquid. Solid soap! <laughs> Hi, my name's Eliza and I run a company called All Natural Soap. Well, I've always been really into um, smells and really into like making cosmetics. We've got pictures of me when I'm a toddler literally making special shampoo. Um, so yeah, it's always been a passion. But um, as I got older, I developed a lot of sensitivities, a lot of allergies to products. And um, what I was looking for was an all natural product to, yeah, to wash with mostly. And I couldn't find, I couldn't really find what I was looking for on the high street because a lot of so-called like natural products, they'll say they're natural, but they'll just use like a tiny amount of natural ingredients. And I was trying to help my skin heal itself with an entirely natural product. Soap started originally as a as a surfactant. People used it to uh, clean their clothes and textile spinning and clean themselves with that. I think it started in Babylon days and and then it ca it came to the Egyptians. Uh, but then um, that was that 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 soap was based on made with ash and uh, sesame oil um, and uh, cypress oil. But then. The, I think the Italians and the Spanish, and it came to the Middle East as well, like Syria, Palestine, and Lebanon. They started making the olive oil soap. I think it's disputed the origin of um, the olive oil soap. Some people say that it began in the um, region of Syria. Some people say that it grew up organically in Spain. Um, but yeah, both, both regions definitely produce and have a history of producing very lovely olive oil soap, the difference being that in the Syria region, their soap um, often contains bay laurel oil because that's what's obviously indigenous to that part of the world. My name is Zeyna Nazir. I'm the uh, co-founder of Jardin Deden um, and um, the middle sister. What I do, um, basically, I'm in charge of marketing, um, business development and sales. The, the origin of all this soap, uh, basically, if you know Tripoli, which, where we come from, north of Lebanon, is well known because of the olive trees and because of, uh, it's, it's got 
thousands of years of history in um, olive uh, oil uh, soap making. So I think it had uses um, in herbal medicine. I think it was also used to um, in the kind of production of textiles, so to, to clean the cloth. But I know that, um, for example, the Romans didn't actually use soap. They, they often covered their bodies in olive oil and then removed, um, removed the olive oil with the strictual, so they weren't actually using soap for, for washing themselves. I believe in around the 19th century, Louis Pasteur uh, confirmed the benefits of hygiene. And um, uh, I, I think it's maybe where uh, the soap was defined as, as cosmetics. And uh, now you see that the soap has developed a lot. You see a lot of brands, new names, uh, different uh, uh, soaps coming with, um, you know, their own aromatherapy smells and benefits and stuff. The, the history behind uh, the Jardin d'Eden is basically we were raised making soap, uh, natural um, casti soap, and uh, with our fathers. I am um, maybe looking after the branding of uh, of the of Jardin des Dames, so looked after all the visual aspect of, uh, of of the brand, the branding in terms of packaging, where it goes to, uh, the colors, the concept, why we have three um, ranges. It's all part of you know our motto of having the um, treats for the urban dweller. We all sisters that had very different career path. What really unified us or united us uh, is the, our background, uh, which is the story of our, our dad um, uh, who really dedicated his life to making Castile soup. Um, my name is Rima Nazer. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Jardin de Den and uh, I look after the production and uh, the logistics for the company. Our father started uh, the business back in Lebanon from Tripoli, where we are from originally. So he started on his own. He used to make everything. He used to make uh, uh, soap, ba uh, soap based on olive oil. It's interesting because I remember our father um, when he used to come back home sometimes and a bit upset, it's like there's something wrong went with his bash and he used to call the soaps like his children. They were like, we are your children, you can't say that, it's just a soap. But now that we are in his shoes, I mean, I really understand what he means when sometimes uh, there's a batch, there's something wrong with the, with the color or whatever, just get so upset, it shouldn't happen like that. It's interesting because, you know, our father used to really take every single note when he used to make a batch of soap. Well, our dad passed away over 10 years ago, but I mean, I feel like I'm in touch with him all the time and uh, I, I feel that he's kind of proud of us. My mum has actually, I've managed to convert my mum from French soaps to mine and she's, yeah, she's keen on the natural fragrances now, which she, she wasn't used to before, but her nose is now, like, prefers the natural smells. It all happens here in our workshop. We make everything. It like it takes few hours to make soap and then a month to dry, uh, and then we do everything like when we have an order or people coming in to buy some product. Our soaps are made like all natural soaps um, from a reaction between fats and an alkali. The main Ingredients in our soaps are olive oil and wild shea butter. So we're making soap in the Castile soap tradition. We use the traditional cold process where traditionally you heat your oils as little as possible, but we've actually taken it a stage further and we don't heat our oils at all. So that really, um, that really preserves the nutrients in, in the raw oils. We add natural clay. Uh, which is uh, great for the skin. People use it as a mask and this is what it gives it the color. And then we add the essential oils because uh, we have, as Zahira told you, we have different blends. The unwind, which is the lavender, the rose, and then the detoxing one. And we worked with our aromatherapist who's, who's Japanese on creating our blends. Um, and then after making the whole mixture of, of soap, you put them in um, molds to dry. These larger bars are made in in a large mold, not too large, around 30 by 30 centimeters and then you can see they're all different. They're cut by hand and then left to cure actually in these crates. 
for at least four weeks because soap is like fine wine or cheese and it gets better with age. So we cure them as long as we possibly can. Uh, basically, this is the traditional way, kind of the traditional way of um, uh, drying the soap. Our father used to do that, put them in like a really much higher than that. But then it allows the air to come in and out to, to, uh, for the soap to dry in a natural way. And then once they're dry, we put our stamp, our brand, a name on it, and then you sell it. Take us through some of your favorite soaps. So I've got quite sensitive skin, and so one of my favorite soaps is my goat's milk soap, which is made with goat's milk, obviously, and calendula petals. Um, calendulas are a traditional um, herbal ingredient that used for soothing the skin, taking down redness and insect bites. And so, yeah, it's just a great soap if your skin's yeah, sensitive and perhaps a bit red like mine. <laughs> so yeah, it's the rose soap. I love it. It well, smells amazing. This is a traditional Castile soap. It's literally made with olive oil and water, so saponified olive oil that's become soap. It's one of the oldest forms of soap um, in existence. We use a blend of olive oils from Greece and Italy, and it's, um, it's really fabulous for the skin because olive oil basically lets your skin breathe and perform its natural functions and it's not, um, it's not going to be inhib inhibited in any way as it would be if you were using a chemical or mineral oil based soap. But we realised when we started the business there are a lot of men who like the rose. Usually people think it's more feminine. There's just that we, it's not rose on its own. We make our blend of rose. Uh, so it's really not too strong, even the lavender, it's not just lavender, it's mixed with other essential oils. So I think that's what makes our uh, products a bit more uh, like distinct, more different than other, other products. What are the main pros and, and, and cons, I suppose, for liquid to be solid soaps? Well, um, I definitely prefer the solid soaps and that's something that I make exclusively because when you use, when you have a liquid soap, there's a very high water content that's not reacted, it's not become part of the soap. And when that is present, you have to use a preservative. And the only preservatives that they've discovered so far that really stem the growth of bacteria enough to make it a commercial product are chemically based. And that's a key reason why I don't make liquid soaps. Also, um, with solid soaps, you've got many more advantages. You're not kind of, washing half of the product down the drain and um, I often use these to, um, to like scent, the, scent my drawers, scent my wardrobe which you obviously can't do if your soap's in a plastic bottle. <laughs> That's a good idea. What do you think is more hygienic, the bar of soap or the liquid soap? I think they, um, they probably will be both similarly hygienic. I mean a bar of soap will last 50 years. Um, you don't need any preservative, you don't need any, anything, so it's a completely natural product. Uh, and the fact that it lasts for 50 years lets you know that actually, you know, there's no bacteria that could go into that, which means that it's, it's, a, it's, a, fantastic, it's a fantastic way to cleanse. Uh, it's just that it's, it's a preference, really, for people. Well, I would say um, the idea behind the liquid soap is you're not using the same soap, like let's say especially in public areas. So it, in theory, it's, it's more hygienic to use liquid soap and it's easier. Um, personally, I think that uh, the soap would clean itself. So there's no, I, I don't think it's an issue when it comes to hygiene. And personally, I think that liquid soap are not as moisturizing so I feel every time I use a liquid soap I have to use cream for my hand uh, as opposed to when I use a soap like ours because we add rosehip oil, shea butter besides the olive oil and different oils that we use and the essential oil so it, it's very moisturizing so for me I feel it's enough to use the, 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 the soap bar. I guess I want to be clean. Um. Probably to get rid of dirt and germs. I don't use soap. Um, well, to wash myself, but I don't wash my armpits, really. They don't need it. <laughs> I have to smell nice. I love the smell of soap, so smelling fresh. I guess just to keep clean and to smell nice, pretty much. Yeah, he smells very nice. Um, I don't use soap because 
I don't wash. <laughs> Why not? Who needs washing? <laughs> to clean myself. I always thought soap wasn't good for your skin. Have you washed your hands today? If so, did you do it like this? Apparently, during the reign of Nabonidus, the last king of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, a recipe for soap was discovered consisting of ashes, cypress and sesame seed oil. However, the earliest recorded evidence of the production of soap-like materials in ancient Babylon was a formula for soap consisting of water, alkali and cassia oil which apparently was written on a Babylonian clay tablet around 2200 BC. Castile soap is a name used in English-speaking countries for olive oil-based soap. The actual origins of Castile soap can be traced back to the Levant, where Aleppo soap makers have been making olive oil-based hard soaps for a millennia. An Italian volcano, Mount Vesuvius, erupted 79 AD, blanketing the town deep in volcanic ash. What's its relevance? Well, years later, excavations reveal a large, fully equipped soap factory. The fall of Rome and the beginning of a millennia of dirty people in greater Europe. Bathing is considered dangerous and decried as immodest, unless prescribed for medicinal purposes. Italy introduces goat tallow soap to France and is perhaps the most traditional and widely used ingredient for shaving soaps. Today, soap and detergent are a multi-billion dollar industry. Soap is still used for washing and bathing. And soap has created a more hygienic and sanitary lifestyle for the human race. Now whatever the claims of yesteryear, who would have thought it? a soapy mixture could actually soften and wipe clean the largest human organ. Now thanks for watching and if you believe something has been unfairly claimed then get your comments in or just add your preference, solid or liquid, to our Facebook page. Now you're free. You're free to do something far more worthwhile with your time and thoroughly wash. Ta-ra! Solid soaps tend to be more associated with old people, to be honest, and they usually just smell like soap. <laughs>